Today on our 2003 GMC Yukon XL, we're going to install the Durali Performance Transmission Oil Cooler, part number D13504. We've added a few additional parts to make it easier for us to install this kit. Two transmission line universal fittings, part number D13032, and additional hose to go from where we tap into the manufacturer's transmission line to our cooler part number D13003. To start, we've already raised the vehicle up and we're getting underneath of it. To give us some more working room, we're gonna go ahead and remove the rock guard. There's a total of five attachment points here for our rock guard. Next, we need to locate the vehicle transmission lines. These two lines here run from the radiator cooler to the transmission. The upper line is considered the low side or the return side from our transmission cooler back to the transmission. This is the side that we prefer to tap into. So next we're going to take our tubing cutter and cut the steel line in half. Now before I cut the line, I'm going to go ahead and clean it. If we do it before we cut the line, it'll prevent us from getting any of the dirt or cleaner into the transmission line. I'm gonna spray it with a little brake cleaner and just take a rag, clean the line thoroughly. This could also be done with a piece of light grit sandpaper or emery cloth. All right, now with the line clean, we'll go ahead and take our tubing cutter and cut the line in half. It is recommended to use a tubing cutter as using a tubing cutter will give us a nice clean cut versus if we use a grinding wheel or a hacksaw that'll leave a bunch of burrs and can cause the line to become out of round. With my line clean, I'll go ahead and direct the transmission oil that's running out of the line into my drain pan. We'll let that go ahead and drain a little bit, and then we'll clean the lines off again. When considering the orientation of where you cut your line, you want to make sure you have a straight enough section to get your compression fitting in, and also enough working room that you'll be able to route your hoses. Now let's go ahead and install our compression fittings. Our new compression fitting kit will come with four pieces. Pieces will end up in this orientation with the compression piece or the crush piece get smashed in between the double threaded nipple and a crush cap. We'll go ahead and slide those on to the line first. You'll need to make sure that the center crush piece is lined up before you can slide it on the line. Then once it's in position We'll hold the double threaded nipple in position as we tighten down the crush cap. This will create our compression fitting on the line. Now that we've secured the crush sleeve in between the thread to thread nipple and the crush nut, we're going to go ahead and add the barb fitting. The barb fitting will thread directly into the thread to thread nipple and then we'll tighten it down. Now we have our line fitting here. We're going to go ahead and repeat the same procedure, install our line fitting on the other side of our cut. Now that we have our two fittings installed, we're going to go ahead and leave these alone for now as we need to get back up on top of the vehicle so that we can find the mounting location for our transmission cooler. To find the mounting location, we're going to go ahead and remove the top cover. To remove the fasteners for the top cover, we'll take a straight screwdriver pry up on the center of the fastener then we can just get underneath of it with our trim tool or screwdriver and remove the fasteners. We'll do that for all seven fasteners. Now we're ready to go ahead and move the top cover. We'll just set it aside for reinstallation later. Next to gain more access to make it easier for our install we're going to go ahead and remove the front grill. Now with our grill off we need to find a suitable location to mount our new cooler. Because of the size of our new cooler, not just any location will work. So what we're gonna do, go ahead and remove the bottom brace here, get in behind it, then we'll be able to take our cooler and attach it directly to the bottom brace. Once we get our cooler back in behind the brace, we'll go ahead and reinstall the brace.
Next what I'll do is go ahead and pre-drill a couple of small holes through the brace so that we can use self-tappers to go through the bracket on the new cooler. Using my yellow marker, I'm going to go ahead and mark the orientation where I want to drill the holes. Then I'll just go ahead and move the cooler aside to make sure that we don't drill through the brace into the cooler. For added security, you can also drop in a block of wood behind where you're drilling to make sure you don't puncture the air conditioner condenser. All right, with the driver's side done, we'll go ahead and move over to the passenger side. Now let's go ahead and position our cooler so we can go ahead and install our self-tapping screws to hold it in position. Once you get it lined back up and in position, I'm gonna go ahead and take a pair of vice grips to hold it in place. Any vice grips or clamp will do. All right, now that we have our fastener installed, we'll go ahead and remove our clamp. And we're ready to start routing our lines. Taking a utility knife, I'm just gonna cut out a larger section around this already pre-existing opening. This is gonna give us ample room to route our hoses. Now let's go ahead and start installing our lines. We'll go ahead and take our hose and our hose clamp. I'm gonna gently tighten the hose clamp onto the hose just to secure it while we get it installed. We'll route our hose down underneath the vehicle through our cutout. Our other end will go into the transmission cooler. Before installing your hose onto the cooler, I recommend to take a little of the new transmission fluid, go ahead and put it on the hose and on the nipple of the cooler. It'll make it easier to slide your new hose up into position. Now once I get my hose in position, I'll go ahead and loosen the hose clamp back up, move it up into position, and then tighten it down. Now with the driver's side done, I'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the passenger side. We'll go ahead and get underneath the vehicle, finish routing our hoses to the nipples that we pre-installed earlier. Once you route your hose to the pre-existing nipple, we'll go ahead and cut off any excess hose that won't be needed. And again, before we try and slide it onto the nipple, We'll take our hose clamp, go ahead and slip it up onto the hose, set it up out of our way for the time being, put some transmission fluid on the hose and the nipple. I want to lubricate it thoroughly as it will help slide the hose onto the nipple. Once we get the hose onto the nipple, we'll go ahead and bring our clamp back in and tighten it down. All right, now that we've got that side done, we'll go ahead and repeat the same process with the other side. All right, now that we've made all our connection, it completes the install portion of our transmission cooler. Let's go ahead and start it up and test for leaks. Now that we've test for leaks, we're ready to go ahead and secure our lines. I'm just gonna take a couple of the black zip ties and secure the two lines together here at the coupling and then also where the two hoses meet as they go around the core support. With our zip ties installed, I'll just go ahead and take my side cutters and cut off the excess from the zip tie. Now we're ready to go ahead and reinstall everything. Now that we've completed reassembling the vehicle, let's go ahead and check the fluid level on the transmission. We'll pull the transmission dipstick out and see where it sits at this time. As you can see, it's well below the full line. Let's go ahead and add some fluid and then we'll double check it. Now we're well within the tolerance of the transmission fluid level on the dipstick. This will complete the install of our Durali Performance Transmission Cooler, part number D13504 for our 2003 GMC Yukon XL.